Welcome to the Ask a Mill Fit Show. Hey, I'm Matt from Matt Lane Fitness. If you are new here, I appreciate you sliding by. You ask your fitness questions and I'll answer them. It's exactly what it looks like. I'm a personal trainer, registered nurse, and a behavioral change specialist. I just love this stuff. I hope you'll drop your questions down below. The more specific, the better. Also, if you're a regular, appreciate you sliding back on by. Let's dive into today's questions. I'm fired up about them. Why are chips so damn easy to overeat? Well, for so many reasons, so many reasons. Let's get into it. I was grocery shopping out with my niece today and she bought a sharing bag of chips that she said she wanted to try. I didn't want to disappoint her, of course, of course not. So I tried them in the car with her thinking to my, tried, tried them in the car with her thinking to myself, I'd only have one or two. I found myself snacking on them uh, the whole ride home and while waiting for dinner, oh, just a couple more chips. I didn't even log them because I was convinced I was eating hardly any. Oh, and the, the, the blade of this sword gets so many people. Then I weighed what was left in the bag after, and yes, my niece had some too, but give or take, after a rough estimation, I mindlessly ate 300 calories of chips. Granted, after adding them, I was only 50 calories over, but wow, they are so easy to snack on without even thinking. Probably never buying a bag like this again. I feel like crap right now. Well, welcome to the world of hyper palatable foods. And that's exactly what it is. It's, it's got fat, it's got sodium, there's carbs, they're crunchy. You love the sensation, the texture in your mouth. There's so much going on here psychologically. But also, the most chips, most like classic chips, there's, there's not a crazy amount of nutritional value in it. I mean, yes, you're getting some carbs in there that could be good for, you know, certain things, but there is very little fiber. And if you don't know, fiber fills you up. Uh, fiber takes a while to digest. So you can mindlessly eat them because there's, there's little nutrition value. There's little fiber. There's not a lot of protein. So all the areas of what would make a food satiety hung, Jesus, man, spit it out. All the areas that would make a food of higher satiety, meaning make you full, this doesn't have it. And it's packed with oil or fats, and that is super high in calories. So that's why it's so easy to overeat in calories on these chips and because they taste good. They're hyper palatable. So hope that answers the question for you. But yeah, it can add up really quickly. Would a almost entirely fruit diet be good? Let me just try that again. Would an entirely fruit diet be good for weight loss? What an intriguing question. I love fruit, but my understanding was always that you should not eat too much fruit because of the high sugar content. However, I just checked the calories of fruit. Most fruits are 50 to 60 calories per 100 grams. That would mean that you need like three kilograms. Anybody? Anybody confused? No? Three times 2.2. Uh, fruit and... <laughs> I feel like I was super condescending when I said that. I was, didn't mean to, but yeah, Americans, there you go. A fruit for each 1,800 calories. So basically, three kilograms of fruit, fruit, 1,800 calories. You could never eat that in a day. How can I, how can fruit, oh God, how can a fruit diet not be good for weight loss at such low calorie count? Does it still matter that the fruit has high sugar? I know there's also the question of macronutrients and this shouldn't be ignored, but for the purposes of intellectual curiosity, maybe we can ring fence that a separate point of a moment and address the weight loss point separately. Okay, I know what you're saying, but don't know what the hell you just said. Here's the thing. Fat loss, this happens purely through a calorie deficit. So you consume, let's just say arbitrary number, 2000 calories is what you need to eat in one day to maintain your health, your weight, your body systems, your fat levels, 2000 calories. On a trend, if you eat above that, you are going to gain fat, gain weight. On a trend, if you eat below 2000 calories, you are going to drop fat, drop weight. You can use the app Lose It or My Fitness Pal to track that. That's how you would follow along. So that is what fat loss is. It doesn't matter what foods you eat. If you're in a calorie deficit, you can absolutely lose fat. Now, the reason that a lot of people 
point the finger at uh, fruits and say there's a crap load of sugar in it is because there is a craze about sugar. There is so much finger pointing to sugar, which table sugar, processed sugars and whatnot, yes, you should probably take a look at that because when you have sugar inside of cake and high processed foods, typically you are skyrocketing that calorie count. Now, fruit has fiber in it, so it is a higher satiety food than say a cake that would have equivalent numbers of sugar to that fruit. So if you ate 1800 calories of nothing but fruit and your goal was to lose fat and that puts you in a calorie deficit, you absolutely can lose weight eating nothing but fruit. There's nothing magical about fruit. You can eat nothing but protein. You can eat nothing but meat. You can eat nothing but eggs. You can eat nothing but lettuce. You can eat nothing but cake. And if you are in a calorie deficit, you are going to lose fat. It's that simple. So yes, fruit, it'll work. It'll work. Anything in a calorie deficit, you're going to lose fat. You're going to lose fat. Can't get focused to restart keto. Well then, let's dive into it. Hi all, I'm stuck in a state of wanting to get back into keto, but can't seem to get focused on doing it. Little history, years ago after my mom passed, I'm sorry, I, use, I used food and booze to cope, understood. I ate like a dumpster. <laughs> uh, that got me, I'm not laughing at you, I'm just laughing at the way, I ate like a dumpster, that's, that's a really funny way to put it. Uh, was around 350-ish pounds, my friend introduced me to keto. And it was great. I started losing weight and got down to 243 pounds. Good for you. Good for you. That is a crap load. That is over 100. It's 107 pounds ish. Good for you. That is unreal. So again, after the breakup, I ate food again and back up to 300 pounds. Currently right now sitting at 287 pounds. I guess I'm reaching out for input on how to get my mental focus back in it. I know I can do it. I just can't seem to get my shit together with it. The stupid BMI index thing says I should be 100, like 180, and I'm, but I'd like to achieve 200 pounds. See where that gets me. For anyone that fell off the wagon hard, what did you do to get back? So, first of all, congrats, and uh, you have my empathy of your mother dying. Can't imagine the pain that that must cause. So, I, I do want to, I just want to give my opinion on some verbiage here. Falling off the wagon, getting back on the wagon. I, I view is there, there's better terminology you could be using ultimately because getting hurt, getting depressed, going in and out of it, all that, that is a part of the process for some people and that's okay. Some people are obsessed with fitness and they're never going to miss a workout and they're bodybuilders and all that crap. They're never going to miss a workout. That's their process. Other people, they come and come and go into it, but I've just, I've never, I've never appreciated falling off and on the wagon, getting in and out of it. I would rather you view it as currently I'm in a valley and not doing great, but this is a forever process of being in fitness. It's just what your relationship is at the time. That's just how I view it. It's just me. Maybe it doesn't mean much to you, but anyway, just wanted to point it out. So you're talking about getting started. Motivation gets you started. Consistency what keeps you going, keeps you on the path to your goal, that is established and that happens only through your reason why. But you cannot lean on motivation in the dark hours when you don't wanna do it because you're not gonna be as motivated as you are when you start three months in, which is why a lot of people quote unquote fall off. So figure out why you really wanna do this. You have to dig down and figure out that why. I will tell you next the tactics that mean the most will be, in order to achieve discipline, it is best to think keep things as simple as possible. A lot of people feel that they have to do crazy, crazy life changes in order to get the results that they want, but I will tell you that I even have a study that says the opposite of that. I'll list that down below, that small changes can really, really impact and change things. So make it super simple. Start with one habit, start with one thing, and then go from there. Don't make it so complicated that you can't follow it because discipline 
comes from doing something over and over and over and over again. And that's where the pro that's where the progress comes from. So if you can have consistency, you can have the goals you want, but it's very difficult to be disciplined with a very complicated process. So make it simple, make it super simple. There is one more thing that I would tell you as far as tactic goes, you know, when you're about to jump off the diving board, at a high pool when you were a kid or even now, or if you're about to get some blood drawn and you know that poke is coming, it's like, oh God. If you've ever had to prick your own finger or anything like that, there is this anticipation waiting moment and you can just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. But until you jump off the diving board, until you go, it's not gonna happen. And it is the most uncomfortable piece. But once you make that first step, the ball just gets rolling. Getting started is the toughest part. A rule that I have of myself is if I have something that I'm literally about to do, but I'm, I'm like holding and waiting, I'm about to do it. Oh no, I'm about to do it. I give myself a one, two, three or a one, two count. I say one, two and go and just go. I'm telling you, for me, it has worked. Maybe for you, it won't, but it's huge for me. If you're looking for fitness plans based on behavior change and science, check it out down below. It's exactly what I do to the Mental Fit Mafia, to the patrons. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. You're always supporting. It means the world to me. You don't have to be perfect at this fitness thing. Just be better than yesterday, every day.